You know what's mad? Nowadays, you can pretty much do anything on your phone, including editing your Insta360 videos. So today, I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so first things first, we wanna get the footage from the camera to the phone. In my case today, I'm using the X3. Make sure the camera is switched on and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are switched on on your phone and then press the magic yellow button in the bottom center of the screen and wait for the phone to connect to the camera. Just while we're waiting, if you're wondering what the hell my hand and arm are doing behind the phone the whole time, it's because I've got a stand on my phone and if my hand wasn't there every time I touch the screen, the phone just wobbles to the left. So yeah, just letting you know. Anyway, moving on, I'm using my Fold 4 today, which is running on Android, but everything we go through pretty much works the same on iOS. Once the two are connected, this window will pop up. All of your preview bubbles, everything that's saved on the SD card will appear. So just clicking on any clip will bring it up to the edit screen. So for this example, let's choose this one. It will start playing straight away. So to pause it, just tap on the preview window. Let's go through everything on the screen before we start actually reframing the video. Starting from the top, you've got your export button. We'll go through that at the end once we've reframed the video. Next to that, you've got three white dots. Clicking on that will bring up file info, like your resolution, your frame rate, the duration, etc. Under that, you've got stabilization and tracking. Under that is color. Then you've got aqua vision. If you shot underwater, you can mess around with that to see if it helps make the clip look better. And then at the bottom, you've got logo. Next tab along is accessories. So if you shot using a lens guard or a dive case and there's a problem with the stitching, you can mess around with these options. Back to the basic tab, you've got a favorite option here. So this star here is your favorite option. If you want to save it as a favorite rather than scrolling through all of the preview bubbles like we did at the beginning, pressing the star will send it to the favorites tab, which is easier than going through all of the bubbles. Now back to the main editing window on the preview screen, just getting your finger and moving it along will let you change the angle of view up, down, left or right. These two arrows will just let you move along to the next clip. And then if you wanna go back, press the left arrow. Then at the bottom, you've got all these different options. So let's go through the first one and work our way along. Trim will allow you to set the in and out points of the clip. And once you've selected the section you want, just press the tick. Next along, you've got your aspect ratio. So the first one is 916, which will be for like social media, like Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, etc. Next one along is 16.9 which is your standard kind of YouTube dimensions. And then you've got one, one, which is a square. So I guess this would be for like uh, Instagram. And then the last one is like a super wide one. Um, but yeah, social media, just choose the first one. YouTube, just choose 16, nine. Uh, next along, you've got music. So selecting that will allow you to add music from a video that's on your phone to the clip or music that's on your phone to the clip as well. And then you've got speed. So if you wanted to create a hyperlapse type video, then you can speed it up all the way to 64 times speed, which is crazily fast, crazily, crazily, stupidly fast. It's not stupid because in some situations it would be good. Uh, super fast, let's say super fast. Uh, you can see here, like this is a 30 second clip. Me speeding it up by like 64 gives me a 0 0.5 second clip, which is just insane. Uh, if I was gonna go with the standard kind of uh, hyperlapse uh, speed that I usually use, 16 times speed, it will give me a 2.1 second clip. You can see that is where I'm getting that figure from. So um, one times the speed, this is a 34.4 second clip. You can see it says it underneath there. And then the more I speed it up, the shorter the clip gets. Um, one thing to note is anytime you go above four times speed, it won't let you preview that. So at the moment we've got two times speed, so you can see it's playing at two times speed. If we go to four times speed, it's now playing at four times speed. If we go to six times speed, you'll see it starts to struggle. So it doesn't let you preview anything above four times speed until you've exported it. Um, so yeah, don't think there's anything wrong with it. It just 
hasn't processed it properly um so yeah this little man here is the motion blur so if you want the motion blur effect keep that on it's automatically usually on anyway if you don't then obviously just press it and it will turn it off and then if you want to start all the way from the beginning then just press this button here and it will take it back to one time speed if you don't want to speed up the whole clip then you can do a section so press section speed and then click on that button there and drag it along the timeline then press that there and then let's say we speed that up by two seconds that means that that section of the clip is now sped up to two seconds and the rest is normal and then any changes you make if you're happy with them press the tick and it will save it after speed you've got multi view so this will allow you to have essentially different views so like let's say for example facing forward and facing behind so if we set this point here and press that button and then we drag it along it creates this orange box press the tick it will do some like analyzing now you can see it's created this little new window in the top right so you've got your main preview window and the little preview window in the top so if we press the tick and we go back to the beginning of this at the moment they're essentially facing the, the same way but if we get the angle to face behind on the main clip you can see now when we play it it will export like this with this facing forward and then this facing behind and obviously you can do that for the whole clip. I've just done that for a little section to show you an example, but this is how it will export with this little box in the top. Um, if you don't want that, you can click on multi view again, click on the orange box and then press the bin icon and it will delete it. Next to multi view, you've got freeze. So this creates like a freeze frame effect. So let's say we freeze this. So we press set start view and then we move it around to their set end view. Uh, when we play it, it will freeze it where we set it to start and it will move it around and it will play it where we set it to end. You can adjust the duration by just dragging the cursor back inside the blue box and then you can change 3, 5 or 10 seconds and then if you're not happy with any of it, you can just press the bin and it will get rid of it. After freeze, you've got snapshot. So this will literally just take a snapshot of whatever it is you've currently got in the preview window. So let's say we wanted to take a snapshot of that. We would click on snapshot and you can either save the 360 image or the current image, which would just be the flat image on the preview window. And it will just save it straight to your phone. Next along, you've got color plus and clarity plus. Um, turning color plus on will just enhance the color. Clarity plus will kind of sharpen the image. You won't be able to see it in the preview window though. Uh, so you can see I've turned color plus on. It hasn't made any difference. Clarity plus hasn't made any difference. Until you export it, you won't see it. I personally keep both of them off. Sometimes it overexposes it a little bit with color plus and it's just too sharp with clarity plus. Um, and then when I go to color correct it later in Premiere Pro, it's just yeah, a lot of hassle, so I just keep both of them off. But you can play around with it, but just turn them on and export a little section of the clip to see how it looks, but you won't be able to preview it in the preview window because it hasn't processed it yet. Then next along, you've got face filter. If you had a face in the shot that you wanted to edit the face, like the eyes, the nose, brighten it up, reshape it. You know, nowadays you can just change everything <laughs> even in the insta360 studio app you can change the face yeah you could change the face of i don't even think my face is showing in here but yeah you can change your face mess around with this and change the dimension of the face and the eyes and the nose if that's what you want to do after face filter you've got normal filter so like you would get on like instagram or facebook you can just scroll along here and the good thing with these filters are it shows you what it looks like in the preview window Unlike some of the other effects that you have to export it, you can actually see what it looks like. So you can use this to change the intensity as well. Um, but yeah, there's just loads and loads and loads of different filters that you can play around with and see which ones you want, black and white or yeah, nighttime ones. Yeah, I mean, it's one of them ones, all these filters, you just get lost in them sometimes and yeah, just, it's all fun and games, but when you've selected the one that you want and you've changed the intensity to how you want it, just press the tick. Um, so let's choose surfing for this one, press tick, and it will save it like that. I like that one actually, that nice little blue tint. That's it looks nice in the snow and the sky. So we'll keep that on for now. 
Next along you've got mark, so this will just set a marker on the timeline. Um, so if you wanted to come back to that point of the clip later, it will make it easier rather than scrolling all the way through. Um, and then you've got reset edits. Um, so if you wanted to completely reset everything you've done, um, press that and it will literally take it back to how the clip was when you first imported it with nothing on, no filters, nothing, absolutely nothing. As you can see, the filters come off. We're back to the beginning where we started. There's nothing on there now. And then next along you've got delete, uh, pretty self-explanatory. This will delete the clip. So if you want to keep the clip, do not delete the clip. And then the last option is download. So if you wanted to download the clip to uh, your phone, uh, which will be saved on the app, so you can edit later rather than connecting your camera to the phone, uh, hit the download and it will save the clip. Okay, so now comes the fun bit, reframing the actual video. So there's three ways that you can do this and I'll go through each of them individually. Um, starting with the first one, the most common one, the one that I use the most and you have the most control over in my view, which is keyframing. So you can see you've got this little plus button on the timeline there. Uh, that is your keyframe button. So what we need to do is we need to decide how we want the clip to start. Like, how do we want the frame to look? So let's say we want it to start facing there. We need to lock that in. So to lock that in, we need to add a keyframe. To add a keyframe, we need to press this plus button there. And then you'll see all of these different options come up. But that has created a keyframe. If I scroll along a little bit, you can see it's created this yellow dot within this white dot. That is your keyframe. So if I go back over the keyframe and back to these options. So over here at the top, you've got five different views. So the first one is Tiny Planet. Very, very self-explanatory. The famous Tiny Planet, a very cool effect. Um, next one along is Ultra Wide, which I use pretty much most of the time. Uh, the next one along is wide, the next one along is linear, and the next one along is narrow. Um, the way to think of it is um, starting from the left and working your way to the right, um, it just zooms in more, and then working your way back to the left, it just zooms it out more all the way to the planet. I usually keep mine on ultra wide because I feel like it gets a lot in the clip uh, without it looking too like fish IE. I know it's not a word, but that's the word that I made up to use fish IE. Uh, sometimes it can look a little bit fish IE, but I feel like ultra wide is um, the, the good balance with that. So we'll keep that at that. So yeah, so once you're once you've kind of moved it around and changed your your angle of view of that, that keyframe is locked in. So let's say we now move along five seconds and we want the angle to move round over this way. Uh, we need to lock that in. So we need to press the button again. So you can see now, if we scroll along, that's created a new keyframe. So if I go back to the first keyframe uh, and I play it. You can see between one and two, it's now changed the angle round to where we saved it. If I then scroll along and I want the angle here to move around a little bit more, I add another keyframe. So if I go back to keyframe number two and play it, you can see between two and three, the camera angle is now moving round. And then we let it play a little bit more and let's stop it there and then we change the angle towards me and then we add another keyframe and we go back to keyframe three you can see now playing it from three to four will change the view round simple as that keyframe 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 now if you're not happy with one of the keyframes it's easy just go back to one by either scrolling through or clicking on it and it will take you straight back. So let's go back to number one. I'm not really happy with how this is starting. I don't know what is going on here. So I wanna change this. So I've clicked on the keyframe. So I just need to change the angle to how I want it. But any change you make, you need to press update keyframe. If you don't, then it's not gonna update what you've just done. So let's press update. So now when we play the clip, you can see it saved what we've just done and it's moving it round. 
and it's moving it round and it's moving it round to finish off facing me. So yeah, so any keyframes you wanna edit, just scroll over them or click on them, change the view however you want it and then update. You can see that all of these icons next to it are highlighted white at the moment, apart from update keyframe, which is kind of grayed out. That's because essentially there's nothing to update. So let's say now we're on this keyframe and we just move this slightly. You can see update keyframe is kind of um, glowed white a little bit like the other buttons next to it, uh, which means we've made an update. So we need to press it and then it saves it. Simple as that. If you want to just delete one keyframe altogether, just click on it and you can see that instead of a plus, this is a cross. Click on the cross and it will delete it all together. So instead of four keyframes now, we only have three. But then what will happen is between the two and four keyframe, instead of the camera angle that we had here, which is now deleted out, it will just move from the angle of that to that. And that is basically it. It's unlimited with what you can do with changing all of the different kind of angles and um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's so, so easy to use, um, but less is more with it. So don't add too many keyframes with too many movements, just keep it to a minimum of what you actually want the camera to do. Um, and I find that that is more effective. So that is the manual way of doing it by adding keyframes. This is the uh, way that I use the most on here and on the desktop version because I feel like you have more control over everything. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to the second way to reframe video, which is using the phone as a viewfinder. This is the coolest way, and if anything, I just use this sometimes when I'm a little bit bored and I just play around with it. I haven't personally edited an actual video using this method, but I have played around with it a lot because I think it is pretty cool. So to get up that screen that we had with all those different options before, uh, you need to press the plus button. Uh, which is the keyframe button, but don't worry, we just need to press that to bring up this row of options here because the one we want is viewfinder. So click on viewfinder and then essentially what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to move our phone around and reframe the video like live. Like, so as you move it, it will record the movement and it will save that as if we were adding a keyframe. So to start this, you need to press record. So as soon as you press record, whatever direction you move the phone in, it will start saving those movements. So let's do a test and so you can see what I mean. So press record, let's face the camera towards me. Let's face up and then face it around. This is so, so cool and look at this, this is mad. This blows my mind every time I do it and then face the floor, face the sky. This is crazy. And you can see it's creating that red box on the timeline. That's all. That's that's these movements that we're doing. I think that's enough. Press stop, um, and then uh, press the tick to save it. Go back to the beginning and let's play it. And all of those movements that we just did are now saved on the timeline. It is pretty cool the fact that you can just literally move your phone around and it records the movements. Like that is that is sick. But I do find this way is a little bit too jittery. Uh, so yeah, I just prefer to use the keyframes, but I'm just showing you all the different options. So it might work for you, but it is just super fun to play around with. So yeah, so if you're not happy with it, you can just click, click on the box and a bin pops up and you can delete it. Um, but there's also another option you can do with it as well. So if you bring up viewfinder again, so you can see here, you've got the tiny planet on one side and like a magnifying glass on the other. I think that's like a magnifying glass, yeah. So basically the whole idea is you would use this um, as like a scrolling in and out. So it's like a zooming in and out. So as soon as you press down on it, um, you have to hold down on it and slide it from left to right. It will zoom the image in and out. Um, but you can also move the camera around at the same time. So this is where it starts to get a little bit jittery because it's like, you, it's just, you're just doing too much. You'll see what I mean. So let's, let's do this. So you have to keep the record held down on this rather than just pressing it like we just did just now. So let's go. So hold down. So move it to me, move it over there. But now I'm gonna slide it towards the tiny planet. See, 
and then I'm going to slide it back, zoom in, so it zooms in all the way like that, zoom out, but all whilst you can still move it around at the same time. So there's a lot going on, there is a lot going on. And then as soon as you let go, it stops it and saves it. Press the tick, let's go back to the beginning and play that. That's definitely gonna be all over the place, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do with it. See, so yeah, it's, it is cool, right? It is so, so cool. I just, yeah, I just personally think it's a bit, bit, bit I don't know. I don't even know what the word is, but yeah. That is how to reframe using your phone as a viewfinder. So the last way to reframe a video is by tracking an object or person. So uh, in this example, this is perfect because I'm in the shop, but you can do anything like a car, uh, a building or whatever it is. Just make sure that there's nothing in the way like trees or anything. Uh, so to get this option up, like we did before, click on the plus button on the timeline. And then now we want to go to deep track. But before you click on deep track, you wanna make sure that the object or person that you wanna track is already in shot on the preview window. Because if you don't, then you can't change that after. So let me show you what I mean. So for example, at the moment, I'm not really in the shot enough for us to track it. So if I click on deep track um, and I try to change the angle of view, it won't let me because it's now asking me to draw a box. So I need to make sure I'm in shot enough before we click on deep track so i think we're going to go across the road here yeah let's start it there so now i'm in shot i press my plus button again i press deep track and now i can draw a box around me and then once you've got your object or person in the box press start tracking and it will literally track it until you tell it not to or it stops itself because something comes in the way so just make sure there's nothing in the way because trust me I've learned the hard way a couple of times of trees being in the way um, and it starts just going mad so um, it does a really good job if there's nothing in the way of tracking it and what this is doing is it will literally just keep the object or person in the center of the screen so I think we'll stop that there uh, that's enough so if we go back now to the tracking segment which is this yellow box here we play that you can see that it's kept me in the center of the screen the whole time you can see it's done a really good job of keeping me center but as soon as it goes out of that yellow box which is not the tracking box you can see it starts to go a little bit wobbly So yeah, so if you're not happy with it, you can just click on the box and then press the bin and then re-track it yourself again. Um, and that can work on cars, like I said, buildings, people, whatever it is. But yeah, that's just another way to reframe something if you want to keep something in the center the whole time and you don't want the camera to move around. So now for the final piece of the puzzle, the only button we haven't covered on the screen, the export button. So once you've reframed your video and you're ready to export, we need to set the in and out points correctly because if you don't, it's going to just export the whole clip. Now that might be what you want, like you might want the whole clip if that's what you've reframed, but if you don't, like in my case, I only want the first 18 seconds, you need to trim it down because if you don't, it's going to export the whole clip. So uh, we need to use the trim tool here, which is what we talked about at the beginning. If you don't see the trim tool like you can't see now, it's because the cursor is hovering over a keyframe. So you need to move it along and you can see now that the option has appeared. Click on trim and then you just need to drag the out point for where you want it to end. So 18 seconds is cool. I want it to start from the beginning so I'll keep the beginning point uh, at the beginning where it is but if you didn't and you edited something in the middle then obviously you would just move the uh, in point uh, down as well. Once you're happy press the tick and now you can see that the time timeline has been cut down uh, to that 18 seconds which is all my four keyframes because that's the only section of the clip that I want to export. Now you're ready to press the magic button, export. So this box will open. This is where you can choose to export the flat video or the 360 video. So the flat video is basically the reframe video. So we'll keep it on that for today. Um, you have the option to share it to wherever you wanna share it to. Uh, it might be on auto when you open it. Um, click on custom, which will just bring up uh, different options for you. The highest you can export on the mobile app, keeping in mind is 1080p. 
so you can obviously go higher on the desktop app so just bear that in mind when you are doing an export then you've got your frame rate then you've got your bit rate keep your bit rate at 50 um i haven't really seen any difference going to 75 apart from the file size is just bigger but i don't know maybe you can see a difference play around with it i don't know but i just keep it at 50 and then literally that is it once you have all of those settings done and you're ready press export and then it will show you the preview window and because this is a small clip it won't take too long and once it's exported it will save it to your camera roll on your phone so this is done nice and quick because it's only an 18 second clip and then we go to open device album and there is the video playing now on my phone the reframed 18 second clip that we just edited you know what I really wanted to do at the end of that video? It's so satisfying. Anyway, let me not lose focus on what is the focus and that is the Insta360 phone app. So yeah, it is an amazing app, super easy to use as you've just seen. I personally do all of my main editing on the desktop version but it's so handy to have the app on my phone so I'm able to quickly do a quick edit for social media or even if I just want to see how a certain clip is going to look when it's reframed, you have that option uh, because you can't see that type of preview on the, the screen of the camera. So yeah, um, just play around with it, have some fun. If you want to check out my full tutorial of the desktop version, I will leave a link in the description below along with all of my cinematic videos that I've shot using the X3 so far.